Hey guys, Lady Liberty Stacker. I am back for another video. Today is January 3rd, Friday, 2020, and I want to wish everybody a Happy New Year, and I hope you're healthy, happy, and prosperous this year with your goals, whatever they may be. The purpose of today's video is we're going to talk about wire wheeling your cast iron during the restoration process, or if you want to redo a skillet, wire wheeling your skillet. Uh, don't panic. There's a, there's a time to do it, and there's a time not to do it, and these skillets here are representative of when you want to do it and when you don't want to do it, and I'll explain why, okay? Um, the other day, I was uh, using my little number two here. Um, it is a, well, let me uh, pause the video for a minute. I'll be right back and show you that that in comparison with the number three. Okay, I am back. This is a number three. Three Notch Lodge, and this is a number two little uh, Food Network skillet, slightly smaller than the three. And I just wanted, I just thought it occurred to me as I'm making the video, but you can see when you put it in there, it's a little bit smaller. That's probably about five, four and a half to five inches across. This one is about six and a half inches across. That's a number three. And uh, this one was not wire wheeled. So anyway, I uh, that's not the purpose of the video. I just wanted to show you this little guy. It was a Christmas present from one of my friends that knows I love cast iron. They had no idea what to get. Uh, they saw this and they picked it up for me along with a um, recipe book on cast iron. This is from the Food Network. And as you can see, it's not collectible. It's probably just one of those, you know, um, promotional type uh, gift items that you can get. It's got a very rough surface. It cooks just fine if you add fat and heat and allow the skillet to warm up. You make sure your fat or your spray or your butter's on there. I happen to use this skillet to make my Egg McMuffins. It's perfect because it is smaller um, for the egg, egg to set up and everything on here. But yeah, you can cook with a bumpy skillet. You can cook as long as you have heat and fat and you have patience. You can cook. The problem comes in with this type of a skillet that has a rough surface when you go to clean it. Uh, the actual cleaning part is no problem. Hot water and a scraper or your scotch bright blue pad that I've shown you multiple of times. The problem comes in when you dry it. You go to dry it. Um, sometimes I just grab a paper towel and dry it or if I wipe seasoning on and off again with my lint-free um, Scott towels here. I get these at Walmart. They're lint free. Believe it or not, when I wipe with my rag on my Crisco when I'm reseasoning this, after I uh, have washed it from cooking a breakfast with it, this actually is a supposedly a lint free towel. It'll catch the lint on the skillet. So you see little bits of blue lint on this. And that's not cool. <laughs> I have to sit there and flick it off and that's why I like a smooth surface, because you don't have to worry about that. Now, granted, over time, as you use a skillet, the surface will fill in, the seasoning will fill in the surface, so it becomes more smooth, and it's not going to catch the little fibers of the paper towels. But uh, that's if you don't like that, that would be the time to wire wheel your skillet. So I may do this one at a future point in time uh, when I get around to it. And this is one I actually did do. It's a modern day lodge. It's a nine griddle. You can see the logo here. It's a nine griddle, nine zero G. And I did wire wheel the cooking surface. And as a consequence, it, it you know, it cooks, it's nonstick. It would have been nonstick the original way it came, but it's a lot easier to clean now. And it does hold seasoning quite well. Um, I haven't used it that much because uh, we don't make pancakes all the time. I usually make eggs and things like that. But uh, it does have, hold the seasoning. You can see here uh, the center part of the burner is, is hotter. And, of course, the part of the seasoning smoked on here. Um, but it does hold seasoning. Somebody tried to tell me that anything that's wire wheeled will not hold seasoning. That's just not true. This one is a great cooker. I just, don't, I just don't make pancakes all the time. I mean, I've got a lot of uh, cast iron pieces, and the question is, what do you use? And I'll make a video on that, too. I've got a bunch of different cast iron pieces for different uses. So if you want to see me make that, let me know in the comment section below. Um, anyway, this was wire wheeled, not the back or the bottom. 
but it was here because I want to make it a little easier to clean up. I didn't really feel like doing this. That isn't really that that rough, but I wanted to practice on it. And the time to do the wire wheeling is if you want to make it smoother, it's for your own collection and it's not collectible. Um, just you know, Lodge, modern day Lodge is, you know, definitely not collectible. So it may be in a hundred years, but by then nobody <laughs> that's watching this video will be around. Okay, so that was wire wheeled. This one, I'm thinking about doing it just because I simply want it to be smoother and easier to keep clean, easier to season. That's why you'd want to do it, but it cooks great. The ones you don't want to do it on are collectible cast iron. This one is a large logo slant, or large slant logo Griswold from Erie. And it's a number 10, and I never wire, -wheel wire wheeled it. Um, because collectors, if they buy this, they like to see the little utensil marks on the skillet. Now, from, from a distance, you can't really see it. Beautiful skillet, but you can on close inspection. Um, it's kind of co a comparison to stripping a uh, piece of furniture that's an antique. Antiques hold their value better if they are just maintained and not redone, or not refinished. Well, cast iron, you can at least strip them and refinish them. I don't know why that's not focusing. But uh, you can't, you, you should not wire wheel it and take away the original metal on it. Collectors like to see that the skillet has been used. So that is a Griswold large slant logo and one of my prizes in my collection. And the other one I found recently at an estate sale late last October. This is an Erie, early pre-Griswold Erie. It is a Griswold, but they didn't call them Griswolds back then. This was made in about 1896 through 1892. It is the number two star series, number eight. And the actually, the that's not a crack. That's just... The way they, uh, they they cast the molds with the molten iron, uh, they would the way they would do it. They would do several at one time, and because I had to look this up to see what this was about, but apparently it would spread on evenly, where part of the uh, molten iron would solidify while the other was still kind of loose. So that's kind of what you got. It like it looks like a wave there. It's not a crack. So this thing is gorgeous. Uh, works just fine, but never did, took a wire wheel to this. And again, you can see the bottom. And it's got some, you know, utensil marks on it here and there. But overall, it looks extremely good. And it's also a prize in my clip. Very light, though. These things are super light. It weighs uh, between 3 and 4 pounds, probably closer to 3 pounds than 4. But no wire wheel was done on these. You never want to do it on collectible. The other one I'm thinking about wire wheeling is this one. This one is a, um, a recast. It is a spinner, you can see there. It is uh, very, uh, it's got almost domed on the top there. And I would like to at least smoothen that out and make it a little bit straighter without, you know, heating it up and warping it or <laughs> whatever. But trying to take a large disc and trying to, get off some of this metal here and then also smooth the cooking surface. I want to make this into a cooker because I don't have a number four. Here's a number three. Sits right in the number four. Now this may be a little smaller than the real skillet because these casts were made, recasts were made by actually using an actual Griswold mold, Griswold skillet as a mold and pouring molten um, iron into that and that's why it kind of had that splotchy appearance. I had no idea when I picked it up, but I figured I could learn something from it. And uh, it's perfectly fine if I can just make it a little bit more level. It'll cook just fine. But you can see where they probably use something like this. It has Erie down here. You can see that. It's got 70-something for the model number. That's a 716 on the 10. And it's got the large slant... Uh, logo, large slant logo, and this one does too. You can't really see it as well, but they did take it number four. So I don't believe it is a real number four. I don't um, have a real number four to compare it to, 
but you know, it's not really going to be collectible because it's not a, I don't think it's a real Griswold. Somebody used a skillet to pour this and make a skillet out of, but I'm going to see if I can uh, use a wire wheel on it to get it to, so it doesn't spin so much and I can actually use it um, in cooking. So anyway, guys, that's when you want a wire wheel. You want at least ease of seasoning maintenance program or I want to level it out a little bit here. This one is just now so easy to maintain and just beautiful. And you never want to touch collectible cast iron with the wire wheel. So um, I've had a lot of comments. I just wanted to put, put the myth to rest, any untruth to rest. And I do appreciate you guys watching. And I will be back once I edit my video. I'm redoing uh, one of my Griswolds. I totally stripped it again, trying to remove the uh, seasoned... Um, old seasoning warts on the skillet and one new one I found right before Christmas. So I'm working on that. I'll get it up within the next week or so. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, please sub up my channel if you haven't. You want to get more videos like this, please give this video a thumb up so it'll be recommended to more people like you that want to see um, things about cast iron, facts, you know, and tips on how to take care of cast iron. And leave a comment below. I'd like to hear from you. Thanks again for watching and go make it a great day. Hey guys, back again. Just one quick thing. If you do use a wire wheel to wheel your skillets, make sure you use a proper mask. Um, make sure that you secure the area. I'm downstairs. Uh, the stuff, you know, will probably fly on the floor and we clean the floor. Um, you don't want to do this in your kitchen or any place like that. Also, when you're doing this, you want to wear um, protection for your ears. These are adequate when I mow the grass or go to the shooting range. These are earmuffs. And then, uh, of course, you have your different, uh, you have your Avanti strip disc. And you have your wire wheel. And I am starting to work on this to smooth out this part of the, of the um, skillet. So it doesn't uh, spin quite so much and it has a flatter, it's just easier to use. And uh, we will season it up when I'm all done and it will hold seasoning. Uh, if it doesn't, you won't see you won't see that, but actually I've done this before and it does. So anyway, just be safe when you do this. There are videos out there which show how to do this safely. Make sure you get the right type of a mask that will filter out particles when you uh, use a wire wheel. You know, and I, this is an electric drill with the uh, quarter inch attachment. So, all right, guys, uh, just wanted to add this in. Thanks for watching.